Sandy Monroe is going to be here to talk about Tesla's 4680 battery technology, how hard or easy it is to produce on a mass scale. Why aren't other auto manufacturers and battery cell providers doing the same thing? And most importantly, about the future of the electric car battery technology. And we're going to start right now. A quick reminder that Sandy is a monthly guest on this channel. I love having him here. It's always, always, always very interesting. So don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss our future awesome conversations. And of course, before I bring him in, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by the Volkswagen ID4 EV, which I am now a proud owner of. One of the cool features in the ID4 is the enhanced voice command system. I can do a lot of things in my car using my voice, including opening the shade of the beautiful panoramic optional roof without taking my hands off the wheel. See if you will love the ID4 as much as I do by exploring the link in the description of this video. All right, Sandy, good to see you again and congratulations on 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. How does it feel? Eee, yippee, yippee. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it's pretty good. Um, we actually um, we actually celebrated. Um, I think we had hot dogs. I'm not sure, but it was uh, it was a big deal. So we're going to have uh, actually we're going to have a, a little party for a couple of the guys that have retired and um, and the 200,000 mark and the fact that now we have no debt, period, none, zero. And you know what? It's been a long time since we've been free from the bank and uh, every everybody else that was uh, clinging at our wallet. So this has been a, a really, really good um, uh, month so far. All right. Yeah, everything's been happening. So it's all good. All good. Congratulations on paying off all of your credit cards. All right. Well, let's yeah. talk about something we've talked about in the past, but I kind of wanted to talk about it from a different angle. You know, it's been not quite a year, but a while since Tesla announced the 4680 batteries. I have one of them here. Thanks. Uh -huh. to, uh, yeah. Well, it's 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 not. John. It's yeah. It's it's uh, yeah. Well, he he got Etsy. me one of those as well. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. um, you know. So the industry knows where Tesla is going and Tesla is, uh, you know, no doubt is the leader. What, are they considering, like, why isn't the industry considering, you know, moving in the same direction? And honestly, the, the question is, how hard is it to catch up to this uh, 4680 technology that Tesla even hasn't started producing? Um, I would guess like near impossible. Um, I think that the reason that they're going with LG and Samsung and and uh, SK and all these other, I think the reason that they're doing that is because this is already something that they can see is in production. Tesla, on the other hand, has been looking at the cylindrical batteries, and I am a fan of cylindrical. I, I, it just they're easier to produce, they're more cost effective, um, they last longer, on on and on and on. And they're easier to wick uh, energy or heat out. So when it comes to heat, um, it's easier to work with that type of battery, the cylindrical battery. Um, I believe that um, I believe that Tesla is going to beat everybody, not because of superior chemistry or or the uh, the uh, the fact that they have high high volume machines cranking them out. I think it's good, it's just going to be because they're investing so rapidly. So, I mean, um, Elon Musk has mentioned the word, um, um, like they, they have the gigafactory now. He's talking about terafactories. Terafactories, that's, that's an amazing amount of power. And that's what he's going to have by, uh, I think it's 2026 or 2027. I mean, how are they going to, catch, how are they going to be able to uh, be competitive if he's putting out basically a terabyte of uh, a Terra uh, gigafactory production, and everybody else is looking at maybe a few meg. I mean, it's going to be impossible. His costs are going to drop like a stone. He's already starting to talk about how um, how they're uh, they're going after the the minerals that they need. You you can't catch an MBA doing that stuff. Oh, wait a minute, we could just buy that from Charlie, and he'll he's not looking at it that way. He says, wait a minute. Supposing Charlie decides to sell to my competitor, or supposing Charlie decides he's going to up the price, or supposing Charlie just goes out of business for some reason or other. I think Elon Musk has got 
there are certain things that I truly believe you should go, um, go vertical on, vertical integration. And that's one of them. I'm not gonna suggest that somebody goes in and starts making her own sensors or cameras or any of that stuff. That's like, that's ridiculous. But I really think that it's a good idea because battery, uh, the battery is the, 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 the vehicle. It's the gas tank. And if you don't make gas tanks, I mean, everybody, every car company makes their own gas tanks, almost every car company. So why would you not want to make the, the, the gas tank and uh, the, uh, the gasoline that goes in it? To me, the batteries are everything, not just one thing, everything. So that's, that's key to me. Okay. By the way, usually you wait until about 10 minute mark of our conversation to poop on MBAs, but you got that out of the way early. Okay. Uh, yes. But, yes. I, I feel better now. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. uh, but okay. So, but I, I get that, but it's not like, first of all, you know, Volkswagen Group and Mini and Daimler and others, they have already committed and spent, you know, a large number of uh, their funds and they're committing to billions and billions of dollars for this. And Tesla is not producing the batteries themselves, right? They, they're doing it with a, a partner, Panasonic. So if Panasonic can take a recipe from Tesla and implement it on a large scale, why can't LG Cam or in-house Volkswagen Group production? Are they bad with recipes? Like what's happening? It's not that they're bad with recipes. It's just that they don't have the volume yet that Tesla's got, and they're not projecting the volume yet that Tesla is projecting. So consequently, when you go up to a supplier and you say, um, I, I think I'm gonna need 10 megawatts of, uh, of power in the next year. Well, really? Uh, well, we, we haven't got that much factory space. Well, I, I'm willing to uh, fund that. Let's get it going. That's the difference, okay? So who at, at VW or, or General Motors or anywhere, who's gonna go up and say, Build me a factory, um, and uh, I I need this much power. Uh, it's, uh, no one's going to do that. They still they're holding back. You'd be surprised some of the uh, some of the feedback that I'm getting about, you know, Sandy, you're just a little bit uh, behind the curve here. You know, big V8s are coming back. I'm telling you, and these are coming from people that I would have thought would have moved to uh, move toward uh, EVs a lot faster than, and they're still still want to talk about um, the good old days. They're not coming back. And, and if you've got executives that are running big corporations and they're making corporate decisions based on next month's prof profits or next quarter's um, uh, growth rate and whatnot, they're not going to make that decision. That's, you know, we talked, I, I do make a, a lot of mention of MBAs. MBA philosophy is make money today. The investing is not good. More than 10%. I mean, I don't want to take a chance. Whereas other people, entrepreneurs don't think like that. They don't think like that at all. If I would have thought at 10% or if I would have thought, you know, hey, I, I, better, I better look at this recession or whatever, or look in this COVID. I shut the company down, grabbed the money and ran away. Yeah, you can have the, the people take care of themselves or the uh, uh, somebody will come along and, and buy the factory, but I'm going to give it back to the bank. If you do that, if you take that sort of mentality, you get an A um, in your finance class. If you uh, do what I did and hang on to everything, you're going to get an F. You're going to be a failure. So I just said, Okay, I had to borrow a tremendous amount of money, uh, more than you can believe, more than I can believe. We were we were in debt at one point. Uh, sorry, last um, last year, I think it was one and a half million dollars in January of uh, of twenty twenty. One and a half million bucks, holy mackerel, for a little company like this. And now we're free and clear. The bank got paid back. Everybody's happy. Why? Because when your back is up the wall, you have two options. You can run up the white flag and run away, or you can stand your ground and, and fight it out and, um, and, uh, and become a lot more creative. Creativity is not, um, creative financing will get you into jail. Um, I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm talking about how do I change my company? How do I make things different and unique? How do I, how do I attack the, uh, uh, the competition in a way that 
that they're not thinking about. So, and, and quite frankly, this month, finally, after a year and a half, we, um, we're, we're free and clear. We're now uh, running leaner than we've, ever le uh, than we've ever run before. And, and we've got lots of new opportunities. What happened to the other guys? I mean, there used to be a lot of engineering companies floating around and you don't see too many of them anymore. They're, they're gone because the guys in charge decided to run up the white flag and, and then run away. So, you know, you mentioned earlier that maybe, you know, Tesla doesn't even have to have the best recipe. Uh, it's all about the commitment and the scale. Um, well, let's talk about this. I mean, 4680, you know, that's what Tesla is going with as their at least, you know, future for the next few years. Is it really the best technology for the industry in the next five to 10 years? Or do you see, I mean, we're obviously, we have, we're talking about solid state uh, technology. You know, last time you even kind of blew our minds with a, with a uh, plasma kinetics um, hydrogen fuel cell technology, um, yeah. you know, that I thought was dead, but apparently is not. Like, what, what do you see as the winning combination, the winning tech, whether for Tesla or just the industry in, in general, you know, within the next five to 10? Okay, so um, 10 years out, I couldn't even guess. I'm, I'm thinking that somebody's going <laughs> to have cold fusion or something. I'm not sure. Things are moving so incredibly quick that um, making a big bet, like what Tesla's doing, is too, uh, is too risky for most of the ordinary OEMs. I think that, uh, I think that the ordinary OEMs are thinking, hey, uh, look what's happened here in the last five years. Can we predict what's going to happen? Because we're on an exponential curve. This isn't a linear anymore. It's like we're going almost vertical with technologies and new chemistries and whatnot. Where are we going to be? Supposing, supposing we guess wrong, what's going to happen? And I'm telling you, there's there's a tremendous, like for instance, every time I do something, I, I like to, you know, give you something new. So here's nanoforge. This is kind of a good battery. This is kind of a unique way of making batteries. And I'm telling you what, I'm pretty excited about this. Nanoforge has got some good techniques and technologies. So we have the ability to look at the new stuff coming down the pike like Nanoforge or the stuff like plasma kin kinetics. You know what? And then I, I, um, I don't even know, I can't really describe what I heard on the phone because it's over my head, but <laughs> there's a company now that wants to go into chemical batteries. Okay, I know about chemical batteries. Um, we use them um, <laughs> for bullets and bombs because I only need that jolt of electricity for a very short period of time, but it has to be a lot and it has to be in a very small area. So a chemical battery really works out quite well. But now we're hearing people talking about, okay, so you're going to have a battery pack and it's working and it doesn't look like a normal battery pack. And you will go to um, a filling station of some sort. And instead of getting um, maybe uh, a charge or, or gasoline or diesel, um, a probe will come in and shoot an electrolyte in. That electrolyte will, in essence, recharge the whole battery. So it's nothing like uh, solar or whatever. It's a chemical that goes in to, to get the, the battery working again. As the battery works, it'll, it'll wind up with some sort of a, a, a byproduct. That byproduct will be taken out. It'll be modified so that it works again as a charging agent and then recycled and put through again. So uh, when I heard this stuff, I uh that's not something i've ever heard of before so there's that one and then there's a slurry battery and again you drive up to some sort of a filling station you suck out the slurry that you have and you pump in a new slurry that's got a charge and you're on your way be probably about this either the same or maybe uh maybe twice the the amount of time that it would take to fill your tank with gasoline and again the slurry is uh, re, re, uh, recouped and, um, and re-energized and bingo, you're back in business. So when I hear this kind of stuff and, and the, I'm talking to these people and saying, well, 
when, when are you planning on making this happen? Well, we're hoping to have it in three to five years. Well, if that's three to five years away, um, what, uh, what battery pack have I got right now that's gonna be able to compete with something like that? Nothing. So it's very difficult to pin this stuff down. And 10 years out, like I said, um, I know that, um, I know that uh, Toyota hired the two guys from University of Utah, I think it was, or Utah University, the guys that said they had cold fusion. And they stuck them in, um, in France and they're still working on it, um, cold fusion. So who knows, maybe somebody will come up with that. If that happens, I mean, all those battery plants are basically useless. The, you, I mean, there's a million things that are going on right now that are just way, way beyond me. But, but I mean, this is a very exciting age to be in. Well, okay. You just said all of those uh, battery plants could be useless with, with the new technology. Then, you know, I guess that begs the question, you know, is the 4680 technology that Tesla is pretty much, you know, uh, putting all of their money into and hopes is that would you suggest that maybe putting all those eggs in one basket may be a bit of a mistake in the future or do you think this is a good idea for now no i think i think it's the best idea for now uh and the reason for that is because you have to get from the point we are right now to the point where it'll be in five years if you invest now in five years tesla will have its uh, uh terra factory uh, terawatt factory that that um, that's going to give them the scale that they need to stay on top. It's it's all about. I mean, what's the most important thing in the in the vehicle? How much charge I've got? Well, uh, for now, I'm going to say it's the battery. The battery is, in essence, the power source. And and if I can make that power source reliable and inexpensive, I'm in. But that doesn't mean that the battery is the key element because we can look at things like uh, what happened with the Audi uh, product. They have the biggest battery, but the lowest range. How is it possible, right? Because they've got inefficiencies elsewhere. So for right now, if we just talk about the battery, if I can make the battery 50% less cost than everybody else, I'll win. Uh, there's nobody that can compete with me and what what Tesla has done is they have the most inexpensive battery. And on top of that, they can make it, they can produce it um, faster than everybody else. And they're making the big bets. So in five years, if uh, somebody come along with, um, with uh, cold fusion or something as, as uh, kind of ridiculous or kind of far out, if they came out with that, guess what? They'll have the money because they they're now the biggest dog on the planet they'll have the money to invest to make it happen. So for me, this is not a bet. Uh, this is an investment. Um, I, don't, I don't gamble, um, but I do place bets. And to me, this is the right thing to do for right now. In five years, you don't have to ask me again. But right now, I think it's the right thing to do. Now, I'm going to pause here because we switched to a different battery-related topic, and I'm going to post that part of the conversation in a couple of weeks. So don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss that conversation and of course don't forget to subscribe to sandy's channel i linked to it in the description of this video all right looking forward to all of your comments other than that see you guys next time and remember to stay charged